Hello, my dear students. In this chapter, we are going to discuss about classification of animals. So, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about vertebrates and invertebrates. Students, I know, I think you all know about vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates are those organisms which have vertebral column or you can say backbone is present. But in invertebrates, backbone is absent and they do not have any skeletal, internal skeleton. So, we are going to classify all the animals into two groups that is vertebrates and invertebrates. In this slide, we are going to discuss about invertebrates that is the animals without vertebral column. Under this classification, we are going to discuss about phylum Porifera, Helentrata, Platyhelminthes, Nematoda, Annelida, Orthopoda, Mollusca and Achinodermata. Then we will come to Vertebrata. So, we are going to start now with Porifera. Porifera, they are also called sponges. They are aquatic as well as non-motile animals which is attached to solid support. And they have pores all over the body which will form a canal system. They have an outer skeleton and do not have any tissue. Examples are spongilla, trichon, euplexilia and leucosolemia. So now moving towards next slide. Second is cilantrata. They are also called nidarians. They are aquatic animals. They have a cavity in the body which is called coelom. Their body is radially symmetrical and they have two layer of cells an outer layer and inner layer and some live in colonies and some are single. For example, hydra, jellyfish, sea animal. And third phylum is platyhelminthes which is also called flat worms. So, these have flat body which is bilateral symmetrical and they have three layer of cells that is why they are called triploblastic and they do not have true body cavity, they may be free living or parasitic. For example, planaria, liver fluke, tapeworm. Next phylum is nematoda, they are also called ascalmenthes or round worms. They have cylindrical body, their body is bilaterally symmetrical and they have three germ layers which that is why they are called triploblastic. They do not have true body cavity and they have tissues but no real organs are found. That is why they are parasitic for example as caris, whipworm, penworms, these are the examples. Now come to the next slide. This is about phylum annelida. Annelida, their body is bilateral symmetrical and it is also triploblastic. They have true body cavity, body is segmented. You can see in this figure, there is a differentiation of organs they found in water and on land. For example, earthworm, nares, leech, etc. Now come to arthropoda, phylum, animal with the jointed legs. And uh, they have bilateral symmetry, their body is segmented, they have open circulatory system, it means blood vessels are not found. Their body cavity is filled with blood and they have a jointed legs. Examples are prawn, cockroach, spider, scorpion, butterfly, housefly. Next phylum is phylum mollusca. They have soft body shelled animals and they have soft and unsegmented body with an outer hard shell. And they have single shell, their body is bilateral symmetrical and their coelomic cavity is reduced. They have only little segmentation. They have open type of circulatory system and their kidney have special organs like a kidney for excretion. For example, snails, muscles, chiton, octopus. And next phylum is phylum Echinodermata from invertebrata. They have spiny skin. They are free living marine animals, they are triploblastic, they have coelomic cavity and they have water filled tube feet which help in movement and their outer skeleton which is exoskeleton, it is made up of calcium carbonate. For example, starfish, sea urchin, feather star, sea cucumber etc. Now come to uh, vertebrates. 
these uh, phylum were from invertebrates now come to vertebrates that is the animal with a vertebral column so all the animals belonging to this group they have distinct backbone that is called vertebral column in this class in this phylum we are going to discuss about so many classes for example fishes amphibia reptilia aves and mammalia vertebrata they have vertebral column and internal skeleton they have bilateral symmetry and triploblastic their body is divided into four regions head neck and trunk and tail also they have two pair of fins or limbs their sexes are separate for example we are going to classify vertebrata into five classes fishes amphibians reptilia aves and mammals fishes under this class fishes will come and fishes their skin is covered with scales or plates they respire using gills and they have a skeleton made of cartilage like shark rays for example tuna rohu etc next class is amphibia they found in land as well as water they don't do not have scales but have mucus glands on their skin they are cold blooded and heart is three chambered respiration is through gills they lay eggs in water for example toads frogs salamanders third class is reptilia they have scales and breathe through lungs they are cold blooded and most of them have three chambered heart but crocodiles have four chambered heart they lay eggs with hard outer covering in water examples are snake turtles lizard crocodile etc next class is aves under this class birds will come they are warm blooded animals they have four chambered heart they breathe through lungs they have an outer covering of feather they have two four limbs and modified into wings for flying they lay eggs for example crow sparrow pigeon duck ostrich etc now come to the last class mammalia they are warm blooded they have four chambered heart they have mammary glands for the production of milk to nourish their young ones and skin has hairs and sweat glands and most of them give birth to their young ones some of them lay eggs like platypus and achidna for example cat rat dog lion tiger whale bat and human being this is the last class students which will come under phylum vertebrata and last is about nomenclature if you want to give name to a particular living organism then that process is called nomenclature and when we are giving two names that is called binomial nomenclature and one is called genus and another is a species and this word is discovered by carolus linnaeus and carolus linnaeus he was given the scientific name of human beings which is called homo sapiens this is the name of genus homo is the name of genus and sapiens is the name of species and last topic is evolution evolution is a way in which living beings change and develop over million of years thank you my dear students